during the tumultuous chaos that engulfed humanity's cradle. Countless moments of extraordinary heroism, deserving of eternal remembrance, took place with each passing second. Yet, tragically, these awe-inspiring deeds were swiftly swallowed by the relentless maelstrom unfurling upon humanity's very cradle, lost and consigned to the forgotten recesses of history. Withered and ill-prepared, conscripted soldiers valiantly clashed with both demon and transhuman foes. Men and women, dogged and defiant, selflessly laid down their lives to purchase fleeting moments of respite for the defenseless and the vulnerable. Demigods clashed against their equals, their epic struggles shrouded in the maelstrom of war. Brother turned against brother, and cousin against cousin. Men who were once comrades, bound by unbreakable camaraderie, now grappled in the mire of mud and dust, locked in savage combat, their blunted blades and empty guns becoming desperate instruments of brutality and survival. As this carnage unfolded, the grim harvest of death mounted ceaselessly, each life lost a somber testament to the merciless chaos that consumed the battlefield of terror. Meanwhile, high above, the heavens transformed into an inferno, ablaze with the relentless fury of unyielding orbital bombardments, casting an ominous glow upon the harrowing display. Within the annals of this epic saga, one figure emerges, a humble mortal, an enumerator hailing from the agricultural district within the enigmatic Dragon Isles, a man known as Katsuhiro. To start us off, I'll dive into the role of an enumerator and its functions, particularly in the context of Katsuhiro. It is worth noting that despite some research, concrete information regarding enumerators within the Imperium remains vague. However, we can venture into relatively informed deductions about the potential responsibilities and significance of such a role within the Imperium of Man. As a bureaucratic enumerator for an agricultural district in the Dragon Isles, aka Japan, Katsuhiro would undertake the task of managing censuses and collecting data related to the population, resource output and production of his assigned district. Accurate documentation and record keeping would be essential, including recording land ownership records, crop yields and livestock numbers. The enumerator would also ensure compliance with any agricultural policies or regulations and act as a liaison between the district and the higher administrative bodies of the Imperium. Resource allocation would also play a crucial role. As the enumerator, Katsuhiro would work on distributing resources such as land, seeds and machinery to the different farms, factories and other projects throughout his district. There would be a need to constantly evaluate agricultural performance and to prepare reports that provide insights for improving productivity and implementing strategic initiatives within the district. In the Imperium of Man, where efficient agricultural production is crucial for the sustenance and support of the war effort, such a role holds a great significance. Through their diligent work, enumerators contribute to the prosperity and efficient functioning of the Imperium, in this case, working to ensure the Imperium's agricultural stability. Immersed in the confines of his secluded world, Katsuhiro dedicated his entire life to his role as an enumerator. His days were consumed by numbers, scripts, and the solitude of his modest hab unit. Yet, fate dealt a violent hand, abruptly yanking him from the tranquil embrace of his numerical realm. He was thrust into the cramped confines of a high-speed hover train, hurtling towards the very heart of the Imperial Palace. It is here in the heart of the Imperium, that Katsuhiro and tens of millions of others would enter the crucible of war. All societal divisions faded into insignificance, for conflict knows no distinction. The war became the great equaliser that unites individuals from diverse backgrounds under one common banner. 
Under dawn's dire edict of conscription, millions of trembling souls, devoid of combat experience and consumed by terror, were hastily equipped with las guns, their hands barely touching the cold metal before being thrust into the fray. Forced into an unknown war without proper training or preparation, these ill-fated conscripts emerged as the stalwart guardians of defence. Entrusted with a formidable task, they were strategically positioned within the intricate and impregnable three-layered trench network encircling the towering walls of the Imperial Palace. For these civilians, the Siege of Terror meant one thing above all else, the end of their lives as they knew it, and the birth of a new life within the heart of a relentless war machine. Gone were the comforts of peace and the sanctity of their homes, Instead, they found themselves in the midst of a battleground, where every moment teetered on the edge of survival. The endless hordes of chaos and the treachery of their own kind became their new reality. Yet, even amidst the engulfing darkness, a flicker of hope remained. In the face of overwhelming despair, the indomitable human spirit shone bright. Ordinary men and women, unsung heroes stood shoulder to shoulder, displaying incredible courage and resolve. Katsuhiro, conscripted into the honoured Kushtun Naganda Regiment, was designated as reserve unit and strategically positioned to fortify the outermost layer of defence surrounding the Imperial Palace, the formidable third trench line under the shadow of the towering Bastion 16. His presence, and that of the Kushtun Naganda, served as a critical bulwark, ready to reinforce the frontline defenders and withstand the relentless assaults that threatened the sanctity of the palace. In the initial throes of the siege, Katsuhiro, alongside his comrades Miz and Doromek, stood resolute amidst the relentless onslaught. They valiantly defended their position against ferocious hordes of beastmen, mutants, traitor regiments and the other monstrous terrors that assailed them. As the first trench line crumbled and succumbed to the onslaught, Katsuhiro and his section remained steadfast. Undeterred by the spectre of defeat, they valiantly held their ground as allied armoured units counterattacked, pushing back the traitorous forces. During these battles, Katsuhiro underwent a remarkable metamorphosis transcending his humble origins as an inexperienced conscript to emerge as a seasoned and battle-tested veteran. In the face of unspeakable horrors, he persevered, forging his warrior spirit and an indomitable will. After enduring weeks of relentless combat and witnessing the horrifying outbreaks of pestilence within the confines of Bastion 16, Katsuhiro and the survivors of his section found themselves on the precipice. A massive onslaught, orchestrated by the Death Guard and spearheaded by massive plague towers, finally overwhelmed the outermost defences. In the face of an imminent grisly death, Katsuhiro sought refuge in a hidden tunnel beneath Bastion 16, only to eavesdrop on his comrades Miz and Doromek planning a treacherous plot to obliterate the Bastion through the use of explosives on its foundations. Seizing a fleeting opportunity, Katsuhiro slipped away unnoticed from these newly identified traitors. Unbeknownst to him, these covert figures were none other than operatives of the Alpha Legion, their true intentions and allegiance veiled in shadows. Even though Katsuhiro managed to survive the initial onslaughts of the siege, his safety remained elusive. Transferred to the treacherous Palatine Ark region of the Imperial Palace, he found himself trapped within the harrowing domain known as Poxville, where the Death Guard continued to unleash their insidious weapons of biological warfare. Within this desolate stronghold, Katsuhiro bore witness to the materialization of the warp's malevolence. His eyes beheld the gruesome sight of his comrades falling victim to incurable plagues and being mercilessly torn asunder by the vile lesser warpspawn that emerged. It was only through the fortuitous arrival of Euphrates Kila that Katsuhiro's own life was spared from the clutches of this unholy chaos. 
now a weathered veteran of the protracted conflict and a witness to the power of Kila and the Emperor, Katsuhiro assumed an unofficial mantle of authority within the ranks of the burgeoning imperial cult. Spreading its teachings to his fellow besieged soldiers stationed at the Marmax Bastion. In the face of relentless assaults from the traitorous forces, Katsuhiro stood as a beacon of hope and resilience, leading by noble example in the steadfast defense of the towering walls. His indomitable spirit ignited a fervent belief in the divine protection of the God Emperor inspiring his brethren to stand firm and fight with unyielding determination. Around this time, Katsuhiro undertook a remarkable responsibility as he became the caretaker of an infant, a lone survivor found amidst the perilous and toxic wastelands encircling the palace. Inspired by the venerable Shiban Khan and the valiant Lieutenant Cole, Katsuhiro embraced the noble duty of safeguarding and nurturing the young life entrusted to his care. As time wore on, Katsuhiro's initial fear gradually gave way to an all-consuming religious fervor. With the infant in his care, he embarked on a path of devotion, following the teachings of Euphrates Kila and assuming a leadership role within the religious militias of the imperial cult in a desperate attempt to impede the progress of the traitorous horde as the loyalist forces regrouped and retreated. Katsuhiro, faithfully carrying the infant, became an integral member of Euphrates Kila's pilgrimage, venturing forth from the Sanctum Imperialis towards a distant light. As the first volume of The End and the Death concludes, Katsuhiro guides a colossal procession of countless destitute souls. This vast train of refugees, comprising millions of desperate mortals, have embarked on a perilous journey, seeking solace and sanctuary in whatever safety remains within the ever-closing perimeter of the palace. Amidst the relentless and merciless crucible of war, Katsuhiro stands as an embodiment of unyielding fortitude and resolute purpose. Despite being conscripted into a conflict for which he was ill-prepared, his indomitable spirit remains unbroken. As the fires of the Siege of Terror continue to rage unabated, Katsuhiro's metal will be subjected to the ultimate trial for upon his shoulders could rest the weight of the Imperium's destiny. On this stage, the fate of an empire teeters on the brink, and Katsuhiro's unwavering courage shall serve as the beacon of hope that may yet lead humanity into an uncertain future. Interestingly, there are potential connections and some speculations that suggest a possible link between Katsuhiro and the enigmatic figure known as Fetidicus. There's probably a couple different ways you could pronounce that, but anyway. While it is important to note that no concrete evidence exists to substantiate this theory, we can explore a hypothetical scenario based on the existing information. We know that Fetidicus whose true name remains shrouded in mystery, emerged as a prominent figure during the tumultuous era of the Horus Heresy. When the apocalyptic siege of terror unfolded, he fearlessly stood against the treacherous forces of Horus, fighting with unwavering loyalty in defense of the Imperium. Following the conflict, the individual known as Fetidicus transitioned into a new role as the esteemed figurehead of the Temple of the Saviour Emperor. This revered institution, considered the precursor to the esteemed Adeptus Ministorum, captivated the hearts and minds of countless individuals from diverse backgrounds. Within its hallowed halls, adepts of the Administratum, valiant warriors of the Imperial Guard, and stalwart members of the Imperial Navy found solace and purpose under Fetidicus' guidance. Under his leadership, the Temple of the Saviour Emperor would flourish amassing a vast following of devoted followers who sought enlightenment and spiritual guidance in the wake of the gruelling Horus heresy. Through his wisdom and charisma, Fetidicus managed to unite men from all walks of life, instilling in them a deep and abiding faith in the Emperor. Thank you.
Considering the shared traits of bravery, leadership, and dedication to the Imperial cause, one could argue that Katsuhiro, the conscript turned hero of the Siege of Terror, may have eventually assumed the identity of Fetiticus. This theory gains weight as we consider that Katsuhiro, after surviving the horrors of the siege and witnessing the fall of his superiors, did indeed undergo a transformative journey. Katsuhiro's steady resolve, newfound spiritual fervor, and his ability to inspire others would have made him a natural leader within the temple. His reputation as a decorated veteran and his first-hand experiences of the horrors of war would have lent credibility to his teachings and attracted a diverse following of loyal adherents. In this unforgiving crucible, Katsuhiro emerges as a symbol of resilience and unwavering determination. Though he may be a conscript thrust into a battle he was never prepared for, his spirit refused to yield. As the siege of terror rages on, Katsuhiro's courage will be tested, and the fate of the Imperium could rest on his shoulders. While the future of Katsuhiro remains shrouded in uncertainty, awaiting the release of the next book in November, I believe that he will play some significant role in shaping the world post-conflict. Despite his current role being focused on providing readers with a human perspective amidst the otherwise incomprehensible war, Katsuhiro's journey may yet hold great importance. Whether he becomes the individual whose horrific death by Horus reveals the depths of Horus's corruption to the Emperor, or if he turns out to be an enigmatic figure of Fididicus, I hope his story is headed towards a remarkable conclusion. In the future installments of this series, should you all enjoy it, we will delve deep into the stories from the Siege of Terror, uncovering the chronicles of other valiant souls united in their resolve to defend the throne world with defiance. Feel free to leave your suggestions and requests in the comments section below. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on which specific characters you'd like me to cover in future videos. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.